It's been a while since we've had our in the mail video here on the channel. I know this is your favorite as is mine, but rest assured, even through summer, through vacation time, I continue to order interesting stuff from the usual supplier, aliexpress.com. So here we go with the first item. A long time ago, I designed and had CNC'd this uh, brass tool for inserting um, threaded inserts into 3D printed parts. At that time, you couldn't purchase a ready-made one, so I just designed my own. Um, it was uh, designed to fit a uh, one of these classical Heiko soldering iron heaters, because back then I was still uh, using an old Heiko clone soldering station, and uh, I got to use this once or twice. It's not something that I need very often, because I don't do a lot of functional 3D printing. I mostly do validation of enclosures with my 3D printer, but uh, when you need it, you need it. And so a few weeks back, I needed to place uh, some of these uh, threaded inserts into a 3D print. And since I don't have any more of those old uh, style HACO, I believe it was 936 soldering station, I couldn't uh, use this attachment anymore because I'm just using JBC and JBC clones uh, these days. So I went on AliExpress and uh, interesting enough, there are plenty of um, off-the-shelf options right now, like uh, this kit, which comes with various size uh, tool heads for dealing with various size threaded inserts. And there is a, uh, a selection of bundle kits that will also include a uh, soldering iron, or you can get uh, a separate uh, cheap one like I did here. So the idea is that you would remove the standard soldering iron tip and you would install your uh, threaded insert tool and it seems that I got my uh, choice right. This fits just nicely and now I can adjust my temperature with uh, this uh, manual dial. Don't really need to go fancy with digital control for threaded inserts. You know, just ballpark temperature settings will do fine. And it seems to be working nicely. Here is a sample of me heat setting a threaded insert with a new tool. It's quite decently designed because it goes through the threaded insert to prevent any plastic flowing uh, back into your insert. So I highly recommend getting one of these sets if you plan to do any threaded inserts. Uh, of course, there are more advanced kits uh, that come in the form of a bench press which will be superior, but for some uh, quick prototyping work, this will work nice. And as always, links in the description below. And before we continue with another item, let me present the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. Right now, they are running their PCB design contest with very interesting uh, prizes for you to win. So I encourage you to sign up to their contest with your own project. Check out their website link below. I'll start uh, showing my next item by showing you the box it came with and a picture of the item because the actual item is now installed in my car. And I'll follow up with some sample videos, but first a bit of background. So I have this RCD330 media player in my VW Golf and this supports Apple CarPlay via USB wired connection. And that's great because I can play my music and view Waze or Google Maps directly on the 7 inch screen. The problem is every time I get into my car, I have to plug the wire. Every time I get out of the car, I have to unplug it. And that's pretty inconvenient, especially for the short trips I take inside the city. And a while ago, I looked at some of these uh, adapters that were these uh, pretty decent sized boxes that consumed a lot of power and they would establish a Wi-Fi connection and convert it to a wired connection. So you could hide them behind the dashboard. However, they were quite expensive in the $200 price range and they had one major disadvantage. They had this really long boot time, like two minutes, because they were booting an Android um, system every time you turn it on and you couldn't have it running all the time because it would drain your battery. So it was, um, you know, linked to a, an ignition rail that would uh, shut it off, but not anymore. Now there are these uh, small efficient adapters that cost much less and I paid something like $40 for mine ship, but I believe now they're even cheaper. I've measured its power usage and it is in the half a watt range on average. So I would have to leave my car parked and unused for several weeks before this could pose a risk of battery drainage. And this thing has a much faster boot time. I think it just runs some kind of RTOS or tiny Linux image on one of those um, 
uh, Chinese SOCs like All Winner or something like that. It is up and running in like 30 seconds from a cold start. But it gets even better than that because I'm powering it from the USB port on my media player, which doesn't uh, shut off. I mean, the USB port still has power when ignition is off and it's a secondary power rail that is allowed to run even after ignition off which makes it perfect because the dongle is always running in the car and my phone starts connecting right when I have, I'm starting to approach the car and I get within Bluetooth or Wi-Fi range so by the time I get into my seat and I start the engine uh, and the media player comes on this thing is already connected and starts um, broadcasting uh, its signal and running the last app used which is typically Waze or Google Maps and I, I like that a lot it's basically instant you turn on the engine and you're already connected so if your car supports um, you know, wired Android Auto or CarPlay uh, get yourself one of these adapters they work very nicely and you have to get a specific model for Android Auto and a different one for Apple CarPlay but it totally makes your life easier and I could have hidden mine behind the dashboard by running a USB wire directly into the uh, media unit PCB but I could not be bothered with doing that I just stuck it here in this uh, space you can't really see it it's well hidden and I use this uh, thin flat USB extension I think it's just it just looks okay and um, it doesn't bother me at all much easier than you know working on the media player and soldering wires on its PCB next up I have this uh, hard shell EVA carry case which is about the size of a portable sorting soldering iron like the TS-80 but could also house uh, other tools when uh, traveling like spudgers tweezers soldering iron tips or maybe even some prototype PCBs it has this nice uh, fake carbon fiber look uh, it was fairly inexpensive so I picked one, one up because I always tend to find a use for these uh, carry cases and if you compare it to one that I have uh, previously showed you can see that it is uh, slightly shorter but a little bit uh, wider um, but it can still uh, fit a, a soldering uh, iron inside or like I, like I mentioned uh, anything else Next up, I got a couple of different models of these uh, pill organizer boxes, which are nice enough to be used for their intended purpose, but also for miscellaneous stuff. They can hold maybe a bunch of uh, micro SD cards or server storage for an assortment of screws or other tiny bits and pieces that one keeps in the electronics lab. Again, I always tend to find the use case for these organizers and I particularly liked how these two are designed, so I grabbed a few. Next I have a set of these uh, very interesting looking Apple AirTag cases which should in th theory turn a regular AirTag into a uh, fully waterproof unit which extends the uh, usability of the AirTag to some other places like I could place one of these on my kitesurfing board to have a chance of locating it when uh, losing it on the water or if it ever gets uh, stolen. Although any thief would probably recognize and uh, uh, discard the uh, tag before you get a chance. For bicycle usage, I highly recommend the water bottle hidden enclosure, which I have shown in a previous mailbag. It goes by unnoticed even to people that handle bikes every day, like repair shops. And uh, just make sure to disable the speaker as shown in one of my other videos. Now the uh, stickers that these come with are marked 3M, but you can be pretty sure that this is not a genuine 3M tape. So it may not hold as uh, well, especially in salt water, cold water, hot water, etc. But uh, hey, it, it's a tracker. So uh, if it comes off, you should be able to locate it as long as someone with an iPhone is nearby. Next up, I got some of these um, neoprene-like repair patch, which uh, can be used to repair various things like your wetsuit, a waterproof jacket, a tent, and other similar stuff. And you can get this in various widths and lengths, sometimes different colors too. And it's usually heat set. So you would have to place this in its final position, use uh, some kind of protection layer like a piece of paper, and then you would heat press it with like a clothing iron for a few seconds which will harden the adhesive they don't mention the temperature at which you're supposed to heat it but i would probably try it with a medium temperature setting for about five seconds and i've seen some pretty good reviews of this uh, product page so i'm i'm eager to give this try at some point i just don't have anything that uh, needs uh, such a repair uh, right now 
I also got some of this um, adhesive uh, backed uh, silicon rubber. It's the second time I'm getting this type of product and first I think I got the 30 millimeter width tape. Now I got some of this uh, 20 millimeter width just to avoid uh, having to cut it upon application. Now useful for test gear such as to prevent sliding on the workbench and generally wherever you might want a non-slip protective rubber patch uh, definitely useful to keep this stuff around. Next up I got a little piece for my survival kit bag. It's one of these sunlight signaling mirrors and it basically allows you to reflect sunlight onto a uh, distant target by locking it through the sight hole. And if your target is a rescue helicopter, a plane, boat, whatever, they would see the blinking reflection and discover your position. And I do have to mention that I strongly recommend using it on passing helicopters, planes, boats, if you're not in an emergency situation because it can severely disturb them and might lead to them reporting you to the police. When I was a kid I remember having one of the nicer ones, uh, metal uh, made, that military pilots were equipped with. It was all polished metal, so something like stainless steel, so there was effectively nothing that could break it, but um, unfortunately I must have uh, lost it at some point. Next up I have a set of these um, silicone insulation uh, terminal sleeves for some big chunky battery terminals or bus bar type applications and I've seen lots of examples uh, where these are used to insulate like the individual terminals for battery packs like uh, for lead acid or lithium ion phosphate uh, DIY battery packs. Makes for a nice uh, convenient solution because you can uh, you know pull them back when you need to access the screw terminals. Next I have one of these uh, very interesting looking tiny miniaturized heating plate and this one has digital control, has this small OLED screen and it takes uh, USB Type-C for an input. It supports power, power delivery over USB-C and they do recommend using a 65 watts capable PD power supply so that it can switch to using 20 volts 3.25 amps. The maximum temperature of the hot plate is 240 degrees Celsius and the hot plate area is roughly 56 by 56 millimeters but may be limited um, you know, by these four screws which are kind of uh, sticking out. Unlike uh, another popular brand on the market, this one is very cheap. You can get it for under $20 ship. And besides being small and cute, it can probably help you preheat or reflow some very small PCBs that would fit within this area. The top uh, heating plate just looks like one of those uh, aluminum backed PCBs uh, with just like a resistive pad on its back. Yeah, you can even see the PCB order number uh, printed in the silk screen on the back of that PCB. So it does get up to temperature. It does have some kind of control uh, loop algorithm for maintaining the temperature. Uh, but uh, for how long uh, this uh, PCB will uh, survive uh, without delaminating uh, remains to be seen. Next, I ordered one of these uh, tiny USB 1 LED lamp. They come in various colors. The one I have here is uh, pink and takes roughly 15 milliamps at 5 volts. So very little power. It can be powered from something like a power bank like uh, I'm, I'm showing here or from any USB port or any USB power supply. Uh, if you get like a warm white one, it may serve as a night light or reading light. If you take several of the colored ones, it may serve as a nice backdrop illumination for some of your YouTube videos but as you can imagine the light output is not a lot coming from just a single one of these. But check out the links I've placed in the description if uh, this sounds interesting to you. Next uh, I ordered uh, one of these generic ESP32 Vroom uh, module plus OLED screen uh, based development board. There is nothing exciting or new about this type of board. Uh, we've been using them for years but I do tend to use them as a quick uh, prototyping platform for whenever I need to do a circuit for a client or for my personal usage and I can give you a recent example. I wanted to test some LoRa communication so I grabbed on one of these boards, hooked up a LoRa module over SPI connected a GPS as well and with a little bit of programming I was transmitting my GPS coordinates over LoRa to my gateway. So I always like to keep one or two of these as spare parts in my dev boards bin. 
I recently discovered this little guy which is an ESP8685 based module but look at how tiny this is and it follows this particular format and pinout which makes it a drop-in replacement for the uh, Tuya CBLC5 modules and people are converting products based on Tuya modules to this ESP8685 module to run test Mota or ESP Home instead which is awesome. The official part number for this module is ESP8685-ROOM-07-H4 and sure enough it does come from Espressif and there is a datasheet for the module. Although I don't have any immediate project in mind, I just had to have one of these because of how nice it looks. As you may remember from previous videos, I got my carabiners from um, AliExpress because I don't use them for climbing, uh, a use case where my life would depend on it, uh, but instead mostly for camping hammock type scenarios where the worst that would happen is I would uh, hit the ground from a one meter height. And even so, I very much trust these solid 25K uh, and carabiners that you see on video. I've been using them for years now. The only problem is that they've become uh, somewhat more expensive because these days you have to pay approximately $12 for one when uh, not on sale whereas a few years ago it was mostly like $5 shipped or maybe even less so I started looking for some alternatives and I found these uh, 12 can rated ones which sell for $2 shipped a piece which is a much better deal uh, I decided to give these ones a try and got a pair the size is roughly 5 by 8 centimeters and the sellers claim a uh, braking force of uh, 1200 kilograms in terms of weight so I figured it should be good for holding a mostly static uh, 100 kilograms load at, at best. They also show a picture of a hammock so it, it was convincing enough for me to place an order. I've tested them and they two work great. There is no visible stretching or bending with with an approximately 75 kilogram load which is the most I could <laughs> gather. And while I was there, I also ordered one of these uh, small aluminum beer opener tools and attached it to my hammock using a small carabiner. Um, I would say that my kit is now pretty much complete. I'm pretty happy with this. And the last item in today's video is this uh, wall socket power meter slash analyzer. So for a long time, I've been using this very uh, basic model with like voltage, current and power used by a particular mains device. And it worked okay, but it didn't have, you know, great resolution. So I wanted something nicer for a while now. And um, I ordered this uh, particular model, uh, which you can get with either a, a Bluetooth um, uh, version which is model number S1B or Wi-Fi interface model uh, number S1W. I got the Bluetooth one because I figured I would mostly want to uh, use Bluetooth with this to uh, connect with my smartphone with their app and I got the EU German type socket but you can order this in other variants as well. As you can probably see on video the um, display has a glossy surface and the brightness is not great at all but given that it will be used 99% of the time for indoor applications it's 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 not something that makes it unusable it's just not as nice because of the lower brightness the measuring voltage range is AC 85 to 265 volts, measuring currents up to 10 amps with 16 amps peaks. The max power is limited to 3680 watts, accuracy plus or minus 1%, which is very vague, but we can check some of the main um, uh, measurements ourselves. It has a 2.4 inch color TFT and gives lots of info like uh, voltage, uh, current, power, and energy, frequency, power factor. It, it can calculate the cost if you input the uh, price and it can be remotely controlled to turn the load on or off because it has a relay. Uh, but I think this mailbag is already long enough so I won't be testing it in this video. Do let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a follow-up where I test the accuracy of the measurements with some of my uh, good multimeters. Thank you for watching, don't forget to smash that like button and leave a comment below if you found something interesting in this video and I'll be seeing you next time.